Hey guys, I'm just going to show you how to bring in a uh, imagery service into Quantum GIS. Uh, in this case, we're going to use one from uh, the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, this is a national imagery provider, and they have uh, imagery that gets down to fairly high resolution, so it's the sort of thing you can use to digitize features on the ground. Um, but uh, since the previous time this tutorial was recorded, the USGS has moved the location of those imagery services, so this will just show you how to find them where they are now. Uh, so first order of business is to go to the web page for this, and I'll include the URL uh, here in the, uh, the notes of this video, the description section below. Um, but you can see USGS provides a whole bunch of imagery services. These are you know, just base maps. You can get shaded relief, you can get uh, topos, imagery, um, all sorts of things that uh, in, in a lot of ways can replace your need for raster data in a very specific location. Uh, not always, but I've, I've found myself using this sort of thing more and more when I, uh, when I require this sort of symbology or this sort of cartographic tool. So, uh, first order of business, we're going to grab the imagery here. You can see this imagery layer, large scale dynamic. Oh, my bad. Actually, we're going to go with the US imagery only, uh, USGS imagery only base map. Uh, you can see it's tiled rather than dynamic, which means it actually moves faster, um, despite the sort of counterintuitive titling. Uh, so basically what you want to do is go over to where it says WMS, get the link. It's going to give you a bunch of XML gibberish here that you can ignore. The only thing you're interested in is this up here this URL. So copy that URL and then we'll go back to Quantum GIS. Uh, look for this little add globe icon here. This is how you add a, uh, a WMS layer. I'm going to add a new one called USGS imagery and paste that URL that I copied right in there. Hit OK and then I'm going to connect to it. You can see it gives me some options. I want to find the option furthest down the thread. So it's this default layer. Um, just open it up until you can't uh, find any further options, then grab that one and hit add. Now that's added it to the map. You can tell because you've got a little thumbnail in your table of contents. However, you can't really see anything yet because the imagery is uh, only available at higher zoom levels. Uh, it's not like a uh, map of the world sort of thing. This is almost entirely for the United States uh, and its high resolution imagery. So let's add a reference layer so we can figure out where we are. Um, in this case I will add sure the Vermont boundary polygon. So it's right there. I'm going to zoom in on it. And you can see it's loading on this imagery service now. Uh, I'll make it hollow just so I can see what's going on underneath. And let's zoom in to a particular area. You can see, because this is an imagery service, that means it's being served over the web, uh, it takes a few seconds longer than if your raster file were located uh, on your, your computer's hard drive. So that's certainly a reason why you might want to be, um, why you would prefer in some cases to use a local raster file rather than an imagery service like this. Um, but let's zoom in here. And you can see we've got some very high resolution imagery. Uh, you can see individual crop fields down to houses, pretty much anything. We'll look at a particular farm here. Uh, and I'm just going to show you how you can create some data on top of this imagery. You can see right about now we've gotten to the, the limit of the resolution here. This is probably like two or three meter resolution imagery. Um, but it's still pretty good. You could make out things like a retention pond here, a barn here, hedgerows, roads, any of that stuff. So let's create a feature. Uh, in particular, we're going to create a new shapefile layer. Uh, we're going to make it a polygon layer. Um, when we specify uh, the coordinate reference system, usually the default is fine. In this case, it's our old favorite WGS 1984. Um, I'm not going to add any attributes to it right now. But I'm just going to hit OK. And then it'll prompt me for a place to save it. And I'll give it a file name. We'll call this field one. And then it's been added. Um, at the moment, it doesn't appear because it has no data attached to it. It's just a blank shapefile with uh, only an ID field in the attributes. 
So in order to give it some attributes, I'm first just going to change the symbology so it won't confuse the map once I've uh, added some features to it. Uh, that fill is fine, but I think I'm going to make it more transparent, like 50%. And then I'm going to right click on this to get the options and go to toggle editing and click on that. And now I am ready to edit this map. Uh, you can see you've got a toolbar here that gives you a bunch of functions, uh, but you'll also see those under the edit tool, uh, the edit menu up above. Um, either way, if you go through the edit menu or go through the toolbar, it, it provides the same function. Uh, when you've got a polygon layer and you're trying to add features to it, you go to capture polygon. So now that we've got that tool selected, I'm going to do a series of left clicks along the boundary of this field. And you can see a feature start to be drawn as I do this. It's pretty basic digitizing. And I'll just complete the feature by right clicking with the mouse. And then it prompts me to give it an ID. This populates the attribute field. I'll call this one. And ta-da, there's your first feature. We'll add another one over here. along the hedgerow, make sure not to get under the road. This is pretty clunky digitizing, I'm not being very uh, precise here, but you get the idea. So I've got two features there now. Uh, if I want to save what I've done, I hit the save button, uh, and then when I'm finished editing, I just uh, either on the toolbar or here in the menu, turn off toggle editing, and then I have a Polygon feature class uh, right on the imagery, derived from the imagery, that I can now use in a map of my own, uh, interacting with other data layers as necessary. And this is very much the same thing if you uh, create data as a point or as a line. Um, each one has to be an individual shape file, but it's the, it's the same process. Uh, left click to add a feature, right click to finish, and populate the attributes as you go.